Welcome everyone to another episode of Conversations with Anne-Marie. This is Anne-Marie, The Art of Healing. Today I have a gentleman that I have met on a few occasions. Uh, he is a lovely soul and I'm very happy to have him with me here on this podcast. His name is Matthew Mornian. He is a professional psychic reader and a multidimensional healer. I have experienced both of those services from him, and uh, I highly recommend him to you all. But without further ado, I welcome Matthew Mornian to the Conversations with Anne-Marie. <laughs> Hello, Matthew. <laughs> thank you. Hello, and thank you for inviting me to show up here. I don't often get summoned to, to uh, moments like this, but whenever I do, I will absolutely make a, make a point to show up. And so thank you. It's certainly an honor. You're very, very welcome. You know, there's um, a couple of reasons uh, why I wanted to chit chat with you. Um, first of all, your work, you are steady, steady, steady uh, producer of content. And in this past several months, your um, podcast has kind of exploded and you've gotten quite a few followers now uh, on YouTube and elsewhere. And I'm just very proud of you because I could say like I kind of knew you when, although you've been uh, doing this for quite a long time, right? You know what? I guess I have, although, uh, you know, it took me from 2009 to get to 6,000 subscribers on uh, YouTube. So that's not that huge of a feat. But what I noticed is around 2017, when I officially announced myself as a uh, professional psychic or intuitive or energy worker, whatever you want to call it, some strange force took over. And so it's good to hear you mention it from that uh, perspective, because from my side over here, I'm always like, where am I? Does anybody even know what we're doing? Is anybody noticing? So thank you. That's really, really, it's very, very good to hear that. You're also, also, uh, adorably, awkwardly humble. <laughs> <laughs> And I certainly appreciate that. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, so uh, most of my listeners know that I've been going through a healing journey, and I want to thank you publicly for being kind enough to offer me uh, your uh, healing service, your multidimensional healing uh, service. And um, I will tell you, it's it's in my realm, so I appreciate it very. In this, and I mean my mm. realm in the sense that you know I'm a multidimensional healer, and I do this work as well, and I'm always looking for people who can kind of get to my level, you know, so I will, I will tell you thank you for that. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, that night, I had a very interesting experience, um, and I believe I told you, but I was lying face down on my bed, and all of a sudden, my consciousness went, whoop, and my body was flat but my consciousness lifted up off of at least up to my waist was popped up like this. And I remember seeing the glow because I've got a printer right here. <laughs> and I remember seeing the glow of the printer, but my, my body was flat down and my eyes were closed. So it's almost as if it activated kind of like, you know, a uh, astral release, uh, at least my upper chakras. Awesome you know, released uh, from the body. So that was really cool. <laughs> well, thank, thank you for mentioning that again. I do uh, recall you mentioning that after the session. And mm -hmm. I guess I would, uh, to kind of like reply to that, I would start by saying thank you for accepting. As a person that does this on a professional level, I am a person that whenever someone's like, hey, do you want to do a healing? I'm like, really? Why? What do you, you know, it's like, I, I always get a little like weird, but it was one of those things. And I, I feel comfortable saying this uh, publicly, but you're, you're a person that I have watched. And, you know, like you said, we've been at events, we've mm -hmm. been around each other for a few years now. Mm -hmm. And it was like, when I, when I heard that you were going through that, it was one of those things where it's like against your better judgment. You're like, it's like this message came in. And I was like, really? Mm. really <laughs> really and then it was like absolutely and thank you for thank you for honoring that because I feel like you're one of the people in our kind of soul group mm -hmm. where we've come back together and done similar work side by mm -hmm. side maybe in you know other channels of existence or timelines yeah. and it's like we've done this weird thing over and over and over again and so I don't know I see you as sort of like a uh what's the word I'm looking for comrade in a sense where I'm yes. like hey, bro like you know, yeah, so anyway. I totally, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, 
Yes, uh, it was a time, it truly allowed me to um, exercise one of the greatest lessons from this um, episode in my life, which was to sit back and receive. So that was a yeah. huge lesson for me because, you know, I've, I've been, and this is one thing that I've been, uh, it's coming to mind. Uh, I've always been in control of everything in my life. Not yeah. just, I mean, <laughs> my house, my children, my mother, the finances, you know, the maintenance. I have been, that has been my role for over 30 plus years. And finally, there was a huge energetic, it's almost like there was a dam up. And then when I sold my house in New York, that dam released, boom, mm -hmm. and I was just knocked over with this momentous mm -hmm. energy that I have perpetuated my whole life, because I've been in the driver's seat my whole life. And so this, the lesson was, you need to sit and you need to relieve, receive and allow. So wow. your, your gift to me was just confirmation and an opportunity for me to exercise that. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah, day. yeah. Thank you. For, thank you for saying that. That's an mm -hmm. honor. Yeah. Beautiful. So uh, let us hear about uh, what made you into who you are right now. How did you get here? Um, whew, that's always the funnest, longest, weirdest <laughs> question that anyone will ever ask me or really anyone that does this work. But, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people that might watch this channel, if they've seen me before, and most of them haven't, because I've realized I'm in a very strange niche and I will literally be invisible to certain individuals. But I, I am one of those people on the earth plane who does this professionally. Um, and I had no idea that this was a thing that I was going to do or be in this life. And it took me until about the age of, honestly, around age 38, um, between that. age 38 and 40, some really bizarre changes started mm -hmm. happening in my, in my world. And it was like, um, and some, some people have, have heard this story before, which, you know, I, I, I often make, make fun of it, but I was, I was working in a whole other, you know, maybe not a whole other different industry or line of work. I was working as a professional mental health worker at the time in addiction medicine and homeless outreach for veterans in San Diego, California. And in summer of 2015, um, I, I, I just happened to receive a, a momentary piece of energy work from just some random older women that were hanging out at this, you know, homeless fair we were doing to, get, to kind of get people into treatment and housing. And they were just a group of people that would set up and do, you know, blessings and stuff. And yeah. it's an old story now. A lot of people have heard it, but this woman literally just looked at me and said, would you like an energy blessing? And I was like, <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't want to go back to work. So yeah, sure. And that was where it started for me. It was like I had known throughout my entire life that there was a very strange empathic ability that I had, but I did not understand it as such. And so when 2015 came and whatever this strange contract I had with this person was, mm -hmm. um, she opened my crown chakra to such an extent that within 30 days of that day in July of 2015, I experienced such a strange and mon monumental change within myself, my physical body, wow. my mind. It's, it was as if every channel, and it's weird now because I realized what I was shown were the channels and the chakras in the body through that experience but it was as if unknowingly this woman just blew open my energy field and I'm speaking mm -hmm. about it from a more analytical past tense mm -hmm. perspective now having mm -hmm. had years in which I could look back and go that's what happened but I had an experience in 2015 uh, where this you know the energy centers the meridians were just blown open and it took me until summer of 2017 to kind of integrate and to understand and to meet some right people and to go through a lot of like tremendous healing within my own body and heart and soul. And it was one of those moments where around 2017, literally just exactly two years later, I knew that it was time for me to make a switch. And so anyway, I'm cutting years and all kinds of data out of the story, but I was one of those people who chose to leave a marriage, a house I owned, a career that I was in, every single belonging that I had, I took only what would fit in my car and I left. Wow. It was like some whole new element of me came in and here we are, it's now 2023. And mm -hmm. that's how it started. And anyway, I could, I could go on and on, but that's mm -hmm. sort of the gist of it. 
I mean, that is, that's, that's like a, how many uh, traumatic events that can happen in someone's life. Very similar to mine. I'm telling you, it's very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Your story is very similar. So um, out of, uh, when you're in, in a marriage and then you decide you just have an epiphany. Now, was it kind of like, you know, now I know it's, it's the right thing. I hate to sound like this, but was this... No, that's okay. Be real. Yeah, yeah. You know, it. was the marriage working before this happened? Or was this a confirmation? A and I don't um, think, you know, this is not a judgment. It's just curious because we're, we're going through it. Right. You know, no, I think that's a very important us, question. Yeah. So many of us are going through, oh my God, who is this person? And it, and, yeah. and, and it's, it's really important for those of us who had, and it takes strength. It takes strength to break this program of marriage. And I hate to say that being someone who loves marriage, okay. but, yeah, yeah. um, but we have to look at it as, um, you know, as something that in a more fifth dimensional point of view, for a lack of a better word for this, for this construct that we choose to uh, participate in. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I, I hear you. That's a really good question and a lead in. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll be totally honest. Um, it, we had we had been together for a number of years, but I have to be real. I was not in a stage of crisis. It was not a total death. It was definitely a slow withering away and, and kind of looking, mm -hmm. looking back at it. Um, I believe that was a contract and an experience that I think a lot of us will kind of agree to have at the early stages of our awakening journey when we're going through a process of self-discovery and self-knowledge. I think that some of us will go through large chapters of our life in certain partnerships or relationships or marriages that we will inevitably come to a stage in which the energy no longer suits us. And I think yeah. for me in that case, it was not due to great trauma or drama or disconnection, but there was a very distinct breaking of timelines. And mm -hmm. I can, you know, I, I talk humorously about kind of what it was for me, which sounds kind of silly. And I'll, I'll, I've, I've told this story before, so it's kind of dumb, but there were days during this two year period from about summer of 2015 to I'll tell you the exact date <laughs> to July 17th of 2017 when I literally took off in which I would have these such bizarre dissociative out of body meetings there was beings there was energies wow. there was literally portals opening up in the ceiling of my bedroom and I could feel <laughs> and smell and taste my body going through these weird layers of energy and it wasn't as if the partnership I was in at the time was toxic or hateful, but I realized that I was in a situation where what I was going through organically in my life was did not fit in with this person's idea of what was real or what they yes. could accept as being real. Yes. And so it wasn't this crazy disconnection and this like, you know, like the love is gone, but there was this moment in which I remember this day I was sitting out in my backyard and I, I went through this period where the only thing I could do is do Qigong because there was so much of something going through my body. It was like I would glitch out and I would stand in my backyard and just do these <laughs> cheesy Qigong movements literally all day. And there was this, it was honestly, it was like a bright Saturday afternoon and I looked up in the sky and I saw the face of a lion which is a weird thing, you know, you're like, well, that's not even a cloud. There's literally a lion's face in the sky in front of me. And I looked in front of me and there was a series of what I believe to be beings, but they were in astral form. There was like an insectoid head. There was like this kind of human being. There was this light shape to my left that was like a silhouette. And there was this transmission that sort of came into my body. And it was like, I knew at that moment, it sounds always cheesy, like a movie scene when I talk about it now. But I knew in that moment that I was being given some form of an opportunity to make this massive fundamental change. And it was like I was bargaining with these energies or these beings. And I was saying, OK, I will do this. Just make sure my son is OK. Make sure that we are safe. I will do whatever this is. I can feel this calling. And it was like this message would go through my head. It's funny because it's my website now, but it was remember your mission. And they were like, Matthew, you have a mission. It is time to remember. And I remember tears streaming down my face. And I'm just crying in the backyard on my hands and knees looking up and I'm like, okay. And, oh and she comes God. out and she's like, so, <laughs> so my wife at the time comes out. She's like, so, so what do you want to do for dinner? Oh, I was yeah. like, 
it was like, and I, I, I realized in that moment, and it's, there's nothing negative. It wasn't a hateful thing, but it was like, I realized these two worlds no longer match. No longer match. It just did not fit. And I was like, okay, yeah. I realized this is what's happening. And so anyway, well, that, that was the moment. Beautiful. No, that was beautiful and very profound. And I, when you were going through your story, light language was entering into my head. So I was, yeah. I was really feeling it. Like I felt it. It was beautiful. So, you know, that's beautiful. That's, that's, that's very, very fair, you know? Um, and um, yeah, that, that wasn't my experience. <laughs> that wasn't my experience, but. Yeah, I think I got uh, lucky. In that case. I really I believe mean, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's very fair because people are, are realizing exactly what you're realizing when you're waking up from uh, the slumber of normalcy of going at it just wrote day after day after day mm -hmm. and getting comfortable with your life it comes a point after an awakening where you simply cannot exist like that anymore no matter how good the yeah. the money is or not how you know I felt very and similar. And it was, all those things were there too, right? I yeah. had the house. Yeah, you know, there was no great like, deficit were... or loss in my life. Nobody was suffering, you know? Yes. I mean, it, it, and it's like, why, why put yourself through it? Because you have to. It's exactly that. You have a mission. You're coming online to your mission. That's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely beautiful. So um, well done, if I can say. Good job, guides. You did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, somebody really helped. I am an example yeah. of a person who really needed a lot of help because I really did not see it coming. Mm -hmm. I did, had no idea. Mm. <laughs> really none, but anyway. Wow, yeah, that's, that's really incredible. Um, all right, so then what? Tell us. Well. <laughs> It's yeah. Okay. Story. So that was, that was around 2017 and I'll, I'll skip through a lot of the wild details, but I essentially ended up um, just a few hours North in Los Angeles, California. And for me at that time, when I was beginning to do psychic work and energy work, like I said, it was really the, a result of being kind of blown open and having what I do believe to be now to be somewhat of a walk-in or a soul unbraiding event, which is a big mm -hmm. kind of spiritual can of worm terms in and of mm -hmm. itself whenever you say that people's minds go what because we all have a different understanding of what yeah. it is but um for me at that stage in 2017 upon kind of moving officially into the next stage of my life I made a couple weird announcements to people in my world you know told some family members I got a lot of don't drink uh, the Kool-Aid type of comments and mm -hmm. are you entering a cult and suddenly you realize you think you're a, like a psychic and last week you were working at a treatment center and like uh, and I was like, yeah, that's literally what happened. And I think for me, I was I was sort of granted an entryway into another timeline in my life because I was one of those people that entered into the path of doing professional psychic work and intuitive body healing, having had no education, no formal instruction. Really? I lit and this, I gotta be real because some people out there cringe. They, they will either cringe or they'll be really excited when I say this. It's like no one taught me. I literally just some weird thing turned it. on in my head. Oh, well, thank you. Someone corrected me from my left. I, I did. There was a very important person that showed up in my life. I always mention this because I think there's people that will come into our timeline and they will see you mm -hmm. and they will see you for what they are and they will give you a piece of yourself. And there was a woman that I had met. She was just a friend at the time, just a person through our online social group. And she was a professional psychic, one of those people that when you see them, you're like, oh yeah, you just know it. You know what I mean? There's no question, no question. And I remember meeting her in person and the very first thing she said to me, which was like a bolt of energy that went into my body. And a lot of people have heard me tell this story, but she literally looked at me the first time I met her and was like, you, you are a psychic. Yeah, you are, you are. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> you know, like, what? I'm not. And it was like, it was like having that moment of recognition and then having someone that I could talk with to say, you know, this is what I feel, or this is how it is. And that's actually the way this works. And what are these feelings or what are these images? It was like, she gave me a piece of myself back. And so when I ended up leaving San Diego, California, which is where I was living at the time, um, I headed out, stayed with her in Los Angeles for a while. And that was where this switch literally turned on. And, you know, for me, the first switch was tarot. 
And it was this experience that I had had where I would just look at the cards and she would just show it to me and go, what is this? What is this? And I would just speak and talk. And it was like some switch turned back on. And very shortly after that, she started to bring in people for me to do energy work with. And it was one of those things where I was like, I don't know how to do, I don't know how to do this. And she was like, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Stop, stop. And I was like, no, I don't. But this weird you know, switch number two turned on. And it was like, as soon as I made the conscious decision to embody that version of myself, despite all the fear and the lack of programming and lack of experience, mm -hmm. it was like a weird miracle occurred in my life, which I will be forever thankful for, because it was like people showed up out of nowhere. I had never heard of them. I don't know how they had heard of me. And it was like some call went out to the universe. And suddenly from that moment, I became entirely self-supporting in the work that I do on an intuitive level all the way up until this day. And so, you know, it's not like we're making a million dollars, but it was like a force came in and was like, okay, if you're going to do this, we'll carry you. And it's still going to, you know, to this moment. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Congratulations. That's really, really spectacular. Thank you. So um, I also was, I was getting more shaking and stuff when you're talking about your story. This is very interesting to me. Very, very interesting right. to me. Um, all right. Uh, so um, now you are creating, um, you've created kind of like these podcasts you have uh, gotten a really beautiful core community. Uh, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. You just did an event in Los Angeles, yes? <laughs> yeah, totally. Conscious Life Expo. Conscious yeah. Life Expo. So one of the things, and I don't remember, were you at the last Dimensions of Disclosure were you guys mm -hmm. I think out I was here? At all of the dimensions of disclosures actually. It was, that was in a, that Ventura was an stage. <laughs> yep, yeah, definitely. Okay. It was so actually I've... the first conference I ever did. So yeah. Oh, and I was there as well. Uh, that was my first uh big disclosure conference and truth or conference. So we were both there. Um, and one of the reasons I went is because I wanted to vet these people out, right? You spend energy, money, your time, which is energy, which is a commodity. Um, and there are disconnects between personas that we see on these little these little screens here uh, versus oh, yeah. who we see in the flesh and in their own energy field. So please describe your experience in gory detail, please. <laughs> At Conscious Life Expo? Yes, I'd love to. No. Yeah. yeah. yeah I will. Yeah. I will. I'll be totally real. I, I got it. I, I will. If, if there's one thing for those of you guys that know me, that will be awkwardly authentic. It was both beautiful and incredibly difficult mm, in equal measure, like incredibly awesome and also absolutely punishing. Mm. And I will start with I will start with the awesome part because I, I always try to give more like energy into that because I think if you don't doing this type of work, it's like you will stay in some sort of old social wound that will continually be reflected. But the awesome part of it was that for 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 us, for me and Enora, uh, for those of you guys that are watching, my wife does very similar, if not the same work as I do. Um, these events are kind of like, it's like a lifeline for us in which we will connect with people. There's every single one we do, we never know what's gonna happen. Um, but there will be a series of individuals that are drawn to the work that we do. And like I said at the start, for a lot of people in this world, you know, the work that I do will quite literally be invisible. And that's not a good or a bad thing. It's kind of a blessing and also a curse that I have. It's a very, very strong hidden frequency. And so what I've noticed over the years is that people will show up and they're like, I don't know why, but... I just saw you and I feel like I'm supposed to, you know, then it's like, yes, I realize that. And so I, I, I have noticed that um, that's just a thing that happens. And there was no mistake this time we went to Conscious Life Expo and there was just such an, 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 an incredibly unique and diverse amount of people that showed up. I did a lecture there, which once again, went for, for those people that do these big conferences, which I'll be honest, are pay to play. I'm not, I am what you would call a low or no tier, you know, like mm -hmm. presenter within that realm. It's like, if I'm showing up there, I'm the class of people that has to pay full price for the experience. So, you know, we put out, you know, several thousand dollars to make this happen. And 
you know, you never know if anyone's going to go to your talk. You never know if anyone cares. You're amongst the sea of, you know, all the who's who, you know, within that world. And I was honestly blessed because, you know, once again, there was this incredible group of people that showed up out of nowhere and a few friends as well. And so that part of it was really awesome. And I, I felt very appreciated, which, you know, for those of us with deep ego wounds from being em empathic beings from, you know, like when we were children, you know, we got a lot of baggage there. So that part was very, very cool. But on the I other wanted, side of it, one yeah, second yeah, before go you go on, I just want to make it clear for people who are, are, are may not know what kind of schedule these these expos have. You have oh, multiple right. presentations going on at the same time. And usually you have some big wig who's got the main hall that could attract yeah. almost everybody. And then you've got, you know, other individuals who, you know, are a little lower on the chain or food chain or whatever. Um, but for for people to follow their call to come and see you, that is that's only spirit. There's no other explanation for it. And it's a beautiful thing. So I just wanted to clarify that for no, people. No, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please feel free to interrupt me because I'll just like, I'll just, like keep talking. Yes, I was saying That's before, uh, Matthew okay. has this beautiful gift of uh, stream of conscious communication. It just flows and it's adorable. I love it. Go ahead. Go, go. Thanks. I did a lot of throat <laughs> throat chakra work. And you know. yes. anyway, the, the other side of it, which I also got to be real about, is the difficult part, I think, for those of us that are true empaths that are, you know, and it's not that, you know, people that go to these these are and aren't, but you're going to notice for those that do this work and continually show up that there's a lot of authenticity and there's a lot of portrayal. And it, I, I, I do say it is difficult to watch the masses completely consume beautiful portrayals that are ultimately false light projections of advanced mm -hmm. spirituality that we see at these conferences. And what I've noticed, and you know, I think this is a natural thing for this awakening kind of timeline that a lot of us are on, but one of the things that really kind of causes me to cringe when I go to those events is that it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you dress up like Jesus at this point and grow your hair long and wear the right outfit and say the right words, you will literally, you will just harvest energy on a shocking level. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we got to see so much of that energy harvest false light spirituality in action mm -hmm. that it's kind of, you know, a part of you gets a little bit like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Go ahead. You know, and it's like maybe, yeah. we, you know, there, there's an interesting process that we see. And I. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of what we would call the, the sign now. So, you know, you like you'll see the dark underbelly, you'll see the false light, you'll see the real authentic people. My computer might be glitching. But anyway, I hope that yeah, makes sense. Can... I'll stop. That keep going. We'll figure it out. We'll keep going. Yes, I'm yeah. I'm curious about that. I just remember um from my own experience going to that big um uh, expo, what was it, Dimensions of Disclosure? And that was that mm -hmm. had like almost all of the big wigs were there. You know, we have CG was there, DW was there, and they were um, you know. I remember people looking at CG like he was Jesus Christ, like he had all the answers Strange. to the universe. <laughs> and, and and it was, you know, and then I remember hearing my friend Simon Esler uh, give his talk on the Sunday morning. And I was like, now you got it going on, mister. I really appreciated I him for that. Yes, yes. He's, um, I haven't heard from him in a while, but anyway. Uh, but yes, it's, it's interesting. And the only thing I can say about that is they're serving some sort of purpose. You know, there has to be a purpose for them to do that, whether it be the opportunity for mass uh, discernment, you know, mass discernment, people will get their knees scraped. And it is yeah. the lesson they need to learn. You know, you wonder why, how are these people, uh, you know, have so much <laughs> But oh, totally that, that's agree. just my two cents anyway on that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Having having said all that, both like the good and the bad, you know, like having seen like the dark underbelly and also the authenticity, I still would not trade it for the world. And it's a right. thing that we honestly thrive upon those experiences. And we'll be doing another one. I think you'll be there in May at the Journey to Truth right. Conference. So 
-hmm. we'll be kind of hanging out in the, in the background <laughs> but yeah we're definitely going to be there so. yep i'm going to have my table there i'll be doing oh, my yeah. thing too All right, cool. Nice. Okay. And so there's my opportunity for uh, the exchange. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay, cool, uh, cool. We will, that we will absolutely awesome. plan on that. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, one, you, you know, I, you put your podcast at like a Saturday at a 6 p.m., you know, which is, <laughs> it was a, an interesting time uh, to put it on, but oddly enough, it always comes up and I'm able to listen, you know, it's frequently it comes up and I'm able to listen. And I, I heard, uh, and this was when, when I was still up in New York, um, mm. you had a gentleman from Canada who you got into a conversation about reptilians. And oh, that was at Conscious Life Expo. Yeah, he has not been on the show yet, but I, I pray he will. <laughs> no, but this anyway, is a ahead. different fellow. It's a different fellow. Oh, he was on your show. No, he was on your show. And he, I don't know if it was you, talking about a vision you had about how the reptilians get into like a stadium and they eat mm -hmm. their young or they eat their okay um and he's compared it to what we do as mm -hmm. humans and how we've been taught and i wore this dress just for this conversation um nice. <laughs> my little snakeskin dress nice. Nice. um <laughs> uh we have been trained into being as, as more reptilian in nature uh you know what i'm getting at i'm doing a yeah. very poor job of communicating this right now no it's okay i feel you yeah i can i can definitely talk but about it, that um it was a beautiful it was it was a beautiful conversation um because it kind of like made me feel good about what i'm doing with my life right now but oh, um you. You do you yourself identify as a, a reptilian? I'm for, sorry if I'm um, really no, this is this a really, really you. good question. This is not at all. This is a very appropriate question for the mm -hmm. energy of the moment. Um, I first off, the experience that you're talking about, I do remember that show in vague vagueness. I'm very stream mm -hmm. of conscious as you sure. know, but what I was describing within that was one of, I, I believe to be one of the most real and pivotal, pivotal or eye-opening extraterrestrial out of body, mind you, out of body experiences that I've had in my human journey. And that was mm -hmm. um, in which both myself and my wife and Nora were present in this moment. I, I don't know that she has conscious recall of it because I think she was in a different space in her own body, but I observed mm -hmm. her next to me within this moment. Mm -hmm. um, and and so it always sounds like a, a wonderful fairy tale movie scene when I talk about this, but um, we were greeted by a reptilian presence within our apartment in Los Angeles, California. I believe this was in 2021 um, during the stage in which there, or it might've might been before, I'm in 2020, my years get weird, but over the past few years, it was an experience mm -hmm. that showed up literally out of nowhere as I was doing a meditation, laying on my bed, just kind of laying back with my eyes closed. Suddenly I, we found us, or I found us within what appeared to be like a hive, like these hexog hexagonal, if that's a yeah. word, like these hive, like, these, yeah, like, a, like uh -huh. a structure. And I was just in it. How do I know I was in it? I could just, I'm like, mm. okay, I'm in a structure. And in front of me, was what I would call, for lack of a better word at the time, like an ancient dinosaur or dragon being. Um, I did look at some of the pictures from the movie, uh, there's a movie Jupiter something where they have some really Jupiter negative rising? reptilian things, something Jupiter like rising? that, ascending or rising or one of those movies. Anyway, it did look very similar to that, but it was like mm -hmm. a much more of what, what I would describe. And some of you guys will get an Im image of it by looking at the left eye, but um, I would describe it very much like a desert colored uh, kind of sandy looking dark brown dragon dinosaur being. Um, I can see the texture of its skin. I can see like these bumps on its body. There was was wearing this sort of robe thing, which I couldn't really see, but it was more like focused on the face. And what I observed and experienced in that moment was like this being that came over very much like they do with animals. They'll catch an animal in the wild and they'll sort of pick it up and turn it around. And like, I was very conscious of not being in control, which I think for some people is fearful, but there was no fear. It was just Grab like my you? body was turned around. Yes, oh, yes, literally okay. picked me up and turned it around and examined me and like turned me over in this weird way. And when I came back to face it, 
there was this weird exchange that I had. And I think a lot of us that have had similar things where it's like your human mind kicks in and you're like, what is this? What am I doing? What am I, what? you know, and, and I, in my mind, I asked, is this real? Is this real? Yeah. And he said, of course it's real. Touch me and tell me if I'm real. And I watched my hand reach out and I reached over it and I just touched it on the side of its face. And it's crazy because I can, it's weird. Every time I talk about it, I can feel it in this way that it was like I was touching this sort of textured, like li literally like a lizard being. And in the moment that I touched it, there was this weird scene that occurred. I've heard other people talk about this. I wonder if that's what it was, but it was like this weird sharing of something happened. And I saw all of these scenes. There was like, a, there was very quick ceremonial things. And there was one that really stuck with me, like I had mentioned, which was this scene in which they would, what, I think the word we use is call, but they would call weaker, sicker members of their, maybe like a tribe or a family or whatever it was. But it was weird because it was an honor. It was like, yes, this is going to happen. Everyone knew it happens. It's like, yes, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think to me, that was the part where I was like, <gasps> you know, this, you feel yeah. and see this visceral thing and it shocked you. And, um, you know, what I took away from that, honestly, was not fear. It was not sadness. It was not anger. It was this, it was honestly, it felt like a deep, deep honor that I got to have this experience. And it took me like a year, at least until I would even tell people because, awesome. you know, within our spiritual community, everyone's like, oh, reptilians, reptilians are all negative. Yeah. Yeah. They mm -hmm. can only be evil. But honestly, it was like they knew me. And I think for a lot of us that have those, we realized, is this an aspect of myself that I'm meeting in the multidimensional space? Mm -hmm. And so to answer your question, it's very synchronistic that it comes at this time because, it, you know, there was a person that was drawn to Conscious Life Expo who worked with reptilian energies that specifically was like, hey, I recognize a frequency within you. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I think that, it, you know, we could officially say on some level that I, I certainly carry and might be embodying on a limited level what I would like to think of some of hopefully some more positive aspects of reptilian energy. When I look at my experience, and I'll pause having said this part, um, when I look at my experience of how this has gone for me with contacts and kind of activations, it makes absolute sense that one of the next stages of my mission is to help recondition our human population around what these beings are, how they work, Thank and you. how we have been lied to. We have been absolutely lied to and also told mm -hmm. some truths, but mm -hmm. anyway. Now, have we, have we been lied to about how they are not all evil? Or have we yes. just been lied to because that they don't exist? What? What? what oh no, they certainly exist. Oh my lord! Um, as have far we as been I can lied tell, to for about that? I, I would say we've been lied to on 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 both sides. In yeah. that, not only is that this is a universally evil energy, but that also that it does not exist. And you know, I you know, granted, I I don't re none of us really know what's going on, and you know, the yeah. bowels of the yeah. earth and the earth realm, but. When I tune into the presence, it is older than humans. And so I, I find it regularly within people. And one of the things that I do do, which I know everyone is capable of, it's still a woo-woo term for some people, but you can very accurately and effectively view yourself in another person's DNA. It's something we're all learning how to do. And I think we're in a stage right now where a lot of us are activating more deeper reptilian elements of our soul lineage. And so we've been lied to, I think, from the perspective that this is a universally negative race. But I think that also part of the truth of what this energy represents is that from a human perspective, mm -hmm. it's not really that compatible with us in right. sort of our paths. And so I think that humans really struggle with like understanding it. And I think that because of the way we've been programmed on earth, the there's this, well, I, I think it might be a form of ancestral genetic fear that comes in with those mm -hmm. beings and those energies mm -hmm. that I think some of us have on a different level. And I have to be honest with you, I have never had an experience in which I felt that I was victimized or in any way kind of attacked by a reptilian energy. And I might be wrong as a person mm -hmm. that does energy work and has helped many people remove entities. And I say mm -hmm. helped because it's a, it's a process you do together with someone. Right. Um, and yet I have never encountered an energy within that space, reptilian in nature, that chose to lash out or victimize me in any way. And so just because I've had, you know, positive experiences with those does not mean everyone else had, because mm -hmm. I have observed people in the work that I do where you, and I, I think you've had similar experiences when you work with people, you will get pictures and images and feelings mm -hmm. and pieces mm -hmm. of their experience. Yeah. And I encounter many people in this world 
professionally where I'm like, whoa, you have had real, literal, actual reptilian attacks in your life. And so what I think also occurs, and I will, I will pause after this, is that we're dealing with so many different forms of life within our physical and non-physical space mm -hmm. that um, many of them based upon the appearance and the energy of alone will be perceived as a negative reptilian race, wherein the reality is most of the truly advanced, maybe we could say upper fourth, fifth, sixth, and beyond densities, mm -hmm. in my opinion, have very little interest they it's like we're like insects to them they're like what why would i want to go into her dreams and you know continually implant and rape this being you're like an insect walking down the street you mean nothing to me mm -hmm. which is also kind of a harsh mindset right but anyway, but it's reflected that makes sense. it so. does and you you know it we we do have uh reptilian dna in us we do have that part of the brain um but it also shows to us on a greater scale um, our position in the in the universe and also in this microcosm that we have here on earth what do we uh how do we treat lesser species you know yeah. we don't we don't honor or respect them either so how can we expect to be you know <laughs> treated the, the same right. way you know we're kind of um, we're, we're kind of no different in a sense mm -hmm. at least on a lighter smaller end of the spectrum similar mm -hmm. dynamics i guess we can say but yeah. having having said that though, i try to be really careful when i'm like hey guys connect with reptilian energy because it's it's it i believe it's a stage and a chapter of energy that i'm integrating right now i think a lot of people because i've been talking to a lot of people about it lately just mm -hmm. the fact you and i are talking about it on your podcast also means mm -hmm. that i believe it's a collective frequency that is rolling through our kind of spiritual community right now and i think one of the reasons why not to dwell on the reptilian thing too long but one of the reasons why is I believe in order for us to break through the, the, the waves of oppression and domination and negative control that have been willingly, willingly complied mm -hmm. with on the earth plane, mm -hmm. that I believe there's a number of us that need to and will have to awaken those reptilian elements of themselves to fundamentally empower. And I'll just say it to toughen up the humans on earth, because I don't know, a lot of people have noticed right now, the trend is to demasculate, to take away all the power, all the control to completely and utterly reverse the roles of masculinity and femininity yeah. on the earth. Mm -hmm. And while part of that does appear to be somewhat a time occurrence. Um, it is also equally part of this great distortion of the human energy system that we're going through. And so I think, you know, in my opinion, on a limited level, it's very helpful for, for us to kind of adopt or to come into just greater in integration with positive reptilian energies. Because if there's one thing you will know, and I know you can agree with this, they definitely don't take any shit from anybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's almost like humans should adopt a little, maybe a little bit of that, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I just found it very, very fascinating that one conversation um, talking about calling um, the population when you described that scene and then your guest, this gentleman from Canada, that's all I can remember, he talked about how um, we don't, the way that we call our our tribe or our herd is we we just shove them off on somebody else and we yeah. release them from from our responsibility we're like well we just don't want to be responsible for you anymore so you're off into a home you know and um he was describing how he works in a older folks home and that uh people just drop their parents or grandparents yeah. and they're like okay see ya and they're like, are you going to come back for me? When am I, when are you coming back for me? And it's literally torturous on, this, on, <laughs> on, on, on a whole section of our, our population. So um, it, it touched me because, you know, I literally changed my life so that I didn't do that to my mother. So really? that's, thank you. That's thank what, you for taking that that's on. kind so of what seriously. I did. And so I was like, wow, okay. But um, thank you for discussing that. Yeah, we I know. Have it's to a, come it's out a, of, it is a I just want to say that I'm a non-dualist. Okay, I I'm not, I believe in non-dualism, and we are in an we are in a world of dualism. How can we? How can you be non-dualistic? Well, you remove you remove a lot of the judgment. Now, having said that, what I'm open to, and I've encountered this in my practice, there are reptilians that 
change polarity. When I do clearings and I remove attachments, there's always the opportunity to reverse polarity, to change from the dark into the light, and many of them comply. So I have come into, in my practice, people who are encountering their torturers that are now in the light and have taken a role of a guide. So it is very hard. Uh, it is very hard to wrap your head around it. Um, but everything comes from source, dark and light. So that's all I want to say about that. I'm not expecting anybody to, you know, uh, go out and, and shoot up flares. Hey, reptilians come to me. I think that's a right. it's not a very smart thing to do. That is not something I'm encouraging. But if that comes into your field, just remember everything happens for your betterment. It does. And I certainly agree with that. Way. So absolutely. And I think we're also having a, a, a similar resurgence of other kind of what we might call extraterrestrial race based energy, if you want to call it that, yeah. um, mm -hmm. in the form of insectoid appearances yeah. is a really, really big one, a tremendous, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of us call them mantis beings, although I think there's many, many variations of those beings that exist in that form, mm -hmm. um, also incredibly active. And then another one, um, which honestly has played a far, far, if, if, if there was one extraterrestrial group that has remained the most mysterious and unknown yet has had the greatest impact on my life, it is literally the origin of the modality that I use and the frequency that I use and the energy work that I do. And that is this, um, this very tall, dark skinned shamanic race of beings they appear very very kind of african and tribal mm -hmm. i know that Corey good has talked about him, love him or hate him you know he was also a contactee of these beings a lot of us have been yep. but i think when i when i look at the beings or the energies that are working with me in the work that i do and i think it's important to say this because inevitably people come to me and they're like well well where what are you doing where did you get this thing where do you use these where, you know, where'd you get these phrases and stuff and um, it is definitely not a reptilian energy. What it is, is a ancient language that we use that came through an experience I had with these very tall, dark shamanic beings in which I was actually taken into a space and asked, no, I, I wasn't asked, I observed myself healing one of these beings and removing an energy from its body. And within the process of that experience and a couple others, um, I actually heard, I heard these beings using this sort of song-like thing that they would do, and they would say these words and these phrases, and as crazy as it sounds, when I came back from those experiences, and for some people, this is a cringe moment, so I literally mimicked it. Mm -hmm. I copied what I heard in an out-of-body extraterrestrial experience, and that was the creation of the modality that we use in our work to this very day. And mm -hmm. so here, the wild thing is, I do not know who they are. There is no name. There is no identity, but they're showing up for a lot of people on the earth plane right now. And anyway, I just want to, you know, put that out there that, you know, what I do is essentially because I had those experiences and I was given this tool or this thing that we now are training everyone else to use. So anyway. How wonderful. And again, I got a little tearied. I got a Thanks. little connection there. I don't know yeah. what this is, Matthew. I started to do a little I shimmy think it's shimmy. Them. Huh? I think we have a similar we have a similar team of guides that you know they're like, oh yeah, you know, they'll all kind of know and everyone you know, yep. kind of rolls in the room. Yep. Wow. Beautiful. How beautiful. So let's talk about us getting our butts kicked by all this galactic energy, because we had a little chit chat about this before we started recording. And um, I, I mean, it's, it's been very strong. It's been very strong. How, um, how have you been feeling in terms of galactic energy? It's pretty wild. I am one of those people that I think for a number of years, I would observe people talking about it and I didn't really feel as affected or even mm -hmm. there was times where I'm like, what, that's nothing. What are you talking about? I'm totally normal. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed is over the past, maybe since like 20, yeah, probably like 2021 on just a much more greater level of, I would say sensitivity to what we might call solar 
or kind of environmental energetic waves. And I've noticed that for myself and the people that I work with, it tends to go in one of two directions, not to make it, you know, it's either going to be this or it's going to be that, but people tend to get overly accelerated during these great waves, or we get kind of slowed down and weighed down by certain energies. And it leads to a number of weird symptoms, brain fog, manic energy, dissociation, um, sometimes mood swings, sometimes just crazy thought forms within your head. And I've noticed for me in charting uh, what I believe was, I think we had maybe like one or two really big X class flares and a couple right. others and, you know, a number of, you know, acronyms and terms that I don't really understand. But one, one thing we do know is that it is beyond the shadow of a doubt. Uh, we are experiencing such a tremendously accelerated amount of solar energy. What kind of effects would that be causing for a lot of the people that watch this? Well, I think one of the things that's showing up in 2023 and beyond is a, gr a, a great change in how we perceive the passage of time. And it's not to say that the passage of time changes, it's how we perceive it and the way we will concentrate or sometimes dilute certain events within a certain predetermined period of time, oftentimes like 24 hours or you know one hour. And there's so much more that can take place. And so I've noticed for me, time just seems to move differently. But anyway, can I just say, think? can I just say, I, we are recording this at the end of February, and I have been doing 28 Days of Spirit. I've been going live on YouTube at 8.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern and channeling every morning. And Jesus showed up today, and what did he talk about, Matthew? What? 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 what are you talking talked about? about time. He oh. talked about yes. time. Flippity flop. What did, what, what did he have to tell us? <laughs> he had to tell us that he had to tell us that it was that that we are not we are more in control of how we perceive time than we know. And are you always running on a clock? Do you always look at the clock? How is your life? Are you allowing yourself to do activities where you will actually slow down time or speed up time? And um, that it is just, uh, you know, something that we have to deal with here on this dimension because as soon as you're out of it there is no such thing so we can mm -hmm. con we can control and manipulate it much much more easily than we are given chance to as a matter of fact i stopped wearing a watch uh i forgot who i i heard oh, say yeah, yeah, yeah. i stopped because um i heard somebody say that they have anomalies with time when they're not seeing clocks so you have you you can have anomalies in time, and I was like, cool, I'm gonna get rid of my clocks and my, and because I I'm really interested in this. Continue, continue. Very real. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> a very real thing. Thank you, Jesus, for showing up and giving us that piece of information that actually helps me as well mm -hmm. to show that I, at least at least a couple of us are reading the energy hopefully mm -hmm. appropriately. It's very cool to hear you say that as a message that was already given because I'm like, I don't know, it feels like our arc ability to work with feel you know understand mm -hmm. the concept of time is greatly changing i and you know maybe you can tell me what you think of this i i do believe you know like like you're saying and many of us have experienced upon leaving the human body time is very 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 different than how it is here within the mm -hmm. physical realm mm -hmm. um have what have you noticed within your own experience how do you do you have have you noticed it's getting longer shorter are you losing days like what what are you seeing? Oh, in that? oh, for me personally, it's interesting. I'm considering my I'm in like a transitory little phase in my life. I believe yeah. that, you know, because I I'm dealing with my mother and she just turned 97 just a couple of days nice. ago. And uh, oh, yeah, her. Absolutely. So we're we're really uh, opposites. Uh, she's very into time and time management and everything in her day is scheduled. And for me, if it was up to me, I would plan nothing. Um, that was another thing that Jesus mentioned. Um, we try and over plan our lives, allow for freedom, allow for freedom and inspiration to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Um, because that way it's, um, it's done without pressure and stuff like that. So it was nice. I don't I'm trying to remember exactly, but I feel um, you. I feel you. So um, some days I feel like the day has gone like this. Um, I'm like, oh God, it's over. We're done. Day's over. Okay. Um, 
and then other days, you know, uh, it takes it's, forever. It takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, thankfully, you know, I'm not, I'm full time doing this work, um, which uh, I'm very happy to be doing it now, um, having okay. left the matrix and everything. And, um, but uh, it is, you know, it's interesting. It's very interesting. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us what you're up to, my friend. What's going on in the world right. of Matthew? Currently, uh, that's a that's a very good question. The past, I would say, I want to say almost two years of the work that we've been doing professionally has involved a lot of training, a number of classes, which you know, once again, is funny and also cool and awkward because. I was one of those people that was like, well, I, I don't want to teach anything. What are you talking about? It's crazy. It's the last, last thing I ever want to do was to start teaching classes. But, but what we found in 2019 when I started doing these is that it was very, I wouldn't say easy, but it's effective and possible to, to, to awaken intuitive abilities and to help people understand how to feel non-physical energy. And it, it's almost like an activation that takes place. So the majority of what I've been doing lately has been a series of classes that I call the fourth density survival series in which we're essentially learning how to work with the chakras, the meridians, uh, mm -hmm. another really big area of interest, the, the, the layers of emotional and experiential energy that surrounds our organs, especially within the body, mm -hmm. and all kinds of new, well, I shouldn't say new, but channels and, you know, pathways within the body that we're just becoming aware of. And so we teach people, you know, not only what, what are we good at in terms of, you know, looking at our energy and clearing away things, um, but how to begin to use these skills in service of the human collective, or really just to heal ourselves. That's the first assignment for every healer, every shaman, every mystic is to understand and to heal the self. And so for a lot of people, that's the initial stage that we're in. And so a big part of what we do is training. And then the other part of what I do, probably the, 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 the real main thing um, is we do private sessions daily, pretty much every single day of the week where um, we just clear energy, sometimes entities, sometimes implants, most of the time, just negative emotions, thought forms and trauma from the body. And so um, we do that pretty much every day, but starting on March 5th is the, the fourth year of a really cool class that we've been doing, which is weird because every year everyone's like, are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? And here we are. It is back again, and it's multidimensional tarot, which I think for people that find me on YouTube, I've noticed that most people have found me through the tarot live streams that we do here and there. We haven't been doing them too many of them so far this year. We're going to do it on Wednesday, actually, but um, uh, it's starting on May 5th. And what, we, what we're really doing is helping people learn how to read tarot, not necessarily from a new perspective, because I don't think it's something that you can reinvent, you know, like the wheel. It's like it's, it is what it is, but what we can do is we can uh, create a completely different relationships with the symbology and the understandings and the energies and what are essentially the characters that show up within this, this sort of cast of beings within the deck of tarot. And what I've noticed over the past few years is that the people that go through this course with us will literally learn how to read tarot in their own way. And it's not that you become a tarot reader professionally, but you will pick up the ability to draw one or two or more cards and go, okay, what is this actually telling me? Mm -hmm. What is the move? What is the direction? What is the feeling? And so that's the next stage that we're starting on March 5th. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's pretty much the mission for now. So I hope it makes sense. Wonderful. <laughs> and you will be uh, in Illinois. You will be at Grafton, Illinois. Oh, yes, we certainly will. Journey yeah, we're, we're going to be doing a table, energy clearings, readings um, at the Journey to Truth Conference in Grafton, Illinois. I think it's, is it May 22nd through 25th, I believe? Yes, I think it is. It's some it some some time in May, um, but we're just we're just there as vendors, and so there's a lot of really cool speakers and other awesome people that are going to be there. But but yeah, that's where we'll be next. Awesome. Beautiful. Well, thank you. This is it's been really interesting. Wow. I think we covered some really uh, cool stuff. I mean, some really cool stuff. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, not your average podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, thank you. Awesome. Certainly an honor. Uh, well, it's a pleasure uh, for you to be here. Thank you so much, Matthew. I love you, brother, in, in this uh, journey that we're on. And uh, thank all of you, the viewers who stuck it out to the end. Um, you will find Matthew's information in the uh, 
area below in the video. And if you ever need me, you can find me at annemariethearthealing.com. Thank you so much. I love you all. Bye-bye.